Today we are going to talk about duplicate ad detection in an online classified service in Iran. So, <clears throat> I'm Diyar Mohammadi. I'm a data scientist in DIVAR, which is, as I said, a classified uh, online ad service in Iran. Uh, I've been working in DIVAR for two years, and I've almost finished my bachelor's degree in computer engineering at the University of Tehran. Uh, first of all, let's talk about you know, the subject. We want to detect duplicate ads in DIVAR. So first, we want to know what an ad is. So uh, <clears throat> this is, yeah. Uh, typically, an ad on DIVAR, we have a title here. And it's shown in the listing. Excuse me, it's in Persian, but you know, uh, the fields are important for us, not the text. We have a description here, which is more uh, descriptive, of the ad, descriptive about the ad. We have some fields. For example, they are uh, optional for, for users, they, uh, but <clears throat> they vary on the, the category. So if you want to post a car, Add it will be completely different uh, fields, and if you want to post another thing, no, it will be again completely different fields, and they are completely optional. Uh, we have some images for this ad, uh, which are pretty important, and <clears throat> usually each ad is submit submitted with three images, so we have you know, a lot of images to work on. We have this category here, which shows which category the post has been submitted, and the location, which is the, for example, Tehran or another place that the ad has been posted. So the duplicate ads. Uh, there are two ways to look for duplicated ads. We can look them in a global way among all ads, and usually <clears throat> this kind of duplicated ads are done by spammers. Uh, their intention is to get more views, or sometimes get. Uh, sometimes it's uh, local competitions. For example, uh, the furniture workshops in a small city in Iran. Yeah, they were spamming their own city, their own city's divar, uh, for like you know hundreds of ads per day, and it was a completely. Uh, and it was a war between them who can concur divar's first page in that city. And it was really amazing for us that they they pay so they pay uh, money to so many services, uh, third-party services that can publish uh, publish uh, ads for them. And sometimes this uh, uh, somehow third-party uh, apps or services use text-to-text -text translations so they can escape our detection mechanisms. And somehow they are really stronger than us. You know, that's really interesting for us. And it, the, another important, uh, interesting thing is that they find complicated bugs in our systems, sometimes ancient, really ancient bugs. You know, we have uh, we have a system, we have a service which was you know, developed like nine years nine years ago, and recently we found out that it has a bug, and they are using it to publish a, a tons of posts in the world. Uh, we are not going to talk about global. Duplicates right now because uh, you know it's a really how to say large area to talk about. But we are going to talk about local duplicates. Local duplicates is about among users' ads. You know, so I, I I post an ad and again I want to post another ad. And if they are similar, we don't uh, from the we don't want them to be posted. They have a few intentions to do this. You know, there are some uh, reasons to do this. First of all, is they want to get more views. You know, you post your ad, it goes down the listing, and no, it gets less view. So we want to get more view, and you, you know, they want to get more view. They post it again, and it gets rejected. Also, we have some kind of fees to repost the ad, and they want to avoid that. So that's another reason. And then we have did some research, and really, sometimes they don't know that it's not okay to post similar. Ads. So let's talk about some numbers from uh, Divar. Right now we have 20 million active users in Iran. Uh, it's like the great, you know, yeah, it's the, how to say, most used classified ad service in Iran. And there are like half a million submitted ads each day. And we have 120 million unique views 
per day for ads. And it's a really, how to say, huge market for us. And we have a team of like 500 operation people working on ads and uh, looking for uh, fraud ads, looking for spam ads, looking for duplicate ads. And we cannot really uh, control it using operations. So that's the reason we are trying to you know, do some parts of it with operation and machine learning. So let's talk about uh, duplicate definition. Uh, our operation uh, refers to ads as duplicate if they are referring to the same real world service or entity. Now, for example, you want to sell this laptop, and that's it. You know, if if I can if I can recognize that this uh, laptop is in two uh, ads, we will reject the second one, uh, and that's a little bit and uh, different for the global ones. So because we have a lot of this kind of laptops, so we cannot uh, reject all laptops in global, but we can reject the same entity among users' uh, ads. There are some you know, tricky points about it. For example, a word or field may determine that the two ads are not similar. You know, I can show you right now. Uh, these two ads are pretty similar. You know, it's in Persian again, so sorry, but it's completely similar. The only difference is this number here, which is 3,500, and which is here, 5,500. And they are OK. So you know, we want a, a method that can recognize, that can detect that these two ads are not similar. And also, we have other people that did, uh, publish the same ad using only changing some words, you know, maybe change a, a number, which are uh, duplicate. So it's not that easy to you know, get exact matches or do things like that. Again, a word, uh, usually named entity mostly, may determine that two ads are similar. For example, uh, there's an ad about a horse, and the horse has a name. Yeah. So uh, this guy texts uh, and says, for example, my horse, Zach, for example, it was a real name for horse. Uh, Zach is pretty good, he's pretty smart, and stuff like that. And again, another ad, which is only talking in a word about Zach. And we should know that, you know, in operation, we reject the second one because it's talking about the same entity in the real world. And also, we, you know, our operation uh, <clears throat> finds uh, similar objects in the, in the images, and they do reject the second, you know, uh, duplicate, the second post based on the images. So uh, let's talk about the problem, no, state the problem. We want to predict the similarity of two ads, you know, given two ads, we want to predict the similarity of them. So it's a ba basically binary classification problem, it's not that uh, complicated, and positive class is duplicate ads. So if we predict one, we mean that these two ads are uh, similar. We used two metrics. First of all, uh, we use ROCAUC, which is somehow independent from threshold, and uh, you know, it gives us a systemic view, a general view that how well our, our model is doing, regardless of the threshold that we set. And we usually, we compare our models using that metric. Also, we have another metric, uh, which is more business related, recall positive and recall negative. I want to elaborate a little bit on that. Uh, as we said, positive is the duplicate class for us, and negative is the healthy, normal ads. So we want a given recall negative. We want, for example, 19, 19 7, 99, based on the categories, uh, negative recall. And we want to <clears throat> know how much recall of positive we can get if we want to, uh, how to say, stay, stick to that constraint, yeah? So this constraint comes from our operation. It's an, like SLA, it's a standard we have. And we try to improve our recall positive based on that. You know, yeah, the standard. So let's, start about, so let's talk about modeling. Uh, our base model is something like that. We have a Siamese network. And as you may know, in Siamese networks, the encoder or the models here are similar. They share the same weights. And the weights are updated. Uh, you know, these are the same models. That's the thing I want to say. 
And we can encode uh, many features in encoder. For example, we can use title and description, as we said, there are tags. We can uh, use images, we can use fields, location and category, and also for classification hit here, we can use dot product, we can use cosine similarity, we can use one or multiple dense layers. And uh, usually here in Dewar we use one or multiple dense layers uh, because we want to add other features there and we cannot exactly, uh, I would say, use that product, uh, that product or cosine similarity uh, directly. Uh, yeah, that's it and let's go to. So the first version that we worked on it was uh, we want text only and we were only you know, feeding text to our model, text and some of these features, basic features, title and description, and city and category were fed to the encoder, and encoding were, uh, came out the encoder. Uh, it was, it is the uh, structure of our encoder, first encoder. It's a multi-layer BioSTM, and you know, uh, first, before this, we were using Fastex, and you know it was real. It was uh, <clears throat> robust and you know really fine in production. But after a while, we couldn't get this, uh, the result that we want from Fastex, so we tried to use BioSTM. Uh, we have some skip connections and layer normalizations. These two have uh, you no. Know, we this structure was finalized during some tasks, so. Uh, we found out that using sync connections and layer normalizations can help our model improve the metrics. We have attention with, here it is, with context layer, yeah, which is pretty awesome. And, you know, the, uh, the base, you know, application for us is, is as a weighted meaning, you know. Usually if you have worked with wireless team models, you can, you know, we have, uh, for example, a hundred uh, dimension vector of embedding, and we have a batch of, you know, text, and each text is, has many words. So uh, at the end, we want to have the same size uh, features for each text. So uh, before this, we <coughs> what we was what we were doing was an average uh, pooling, but uh, after using attention with context layer. You know, there were pretty you know, good results that we get. Actually, for example, uh, in one fourth of the time that was real, that was needed uh, to train the model without this layer, uh, we could train it right now. So that was pretty awesome, and we use it right, uh, <laughs> every time we have such, tags, uh, such tasks. Also, we have some embedding layers for our category, category of features, and we were using one, uh, one hot encoding before our other, for example, uh, encodings, but after a while, we did a lot of experiments, and the best way that we could uh, get results was using embedding layers, and we started to use that, and right now we are not using that much of other encoding uh, methods. And at the end, we can't get all the features that we have, and that's the output of our encoder. So, the ROC you see that we get was 0 0.83, uh, which is pretty low, and we were disappointed because uh, that's not a standard for our you know, production. The problem was that it only captures semantic information from text, you know, we have two texts, we digest them, digest them through BioSTM, and we have two semantics, but they are only semantics, and we saw a lot of samples that, you know, the semantics were not uh, maybe that much similar, but the words were similar, so, you know, they appear similar, not, they were not, how to say, uh, meaningly similar. They were, the words were uh, similar, and that was the reason that they were duplicated. Uh, so that was the, one of the problems. The other problem was that we have a lot of out of vocab words. For example, as I said, Zach, the horse. We don't have Zach in our vocab, but it's really important for us because, you know, if two ads are talking about the same rare word, so there's a probability that they are, you know, similar. But we couldn't capture that using this method. 
And also images were not handled. We had a lot of samples that our operation has detected this duplicate ads using images and our model had no access to images. So uh, it could really uh, do some mistakes. And also our numbers were not handled properly. Again, uh, when we have numbers in a text, uh, our biolysis cannot digest that uh, properly. So we have two uh, ads, as we said, they have different numbers, but uh, it's not digested in BioLSTM, and the model cannot learn anything from that. So uh, for our version two, we tried to create some handcraft features, and uh, these features were mostly about appearance of, appearance of text. For example, uh, this is our uh, version two model. We have a module here, which calculates some comparison features and concatenated with the embeddings in this layer before the classification head. And the first uh, three things that we added was Levenstein ratio, mean hash score, and common numbers. So uh, Levenstein ratio and mean hash, uh, the, uh, the, these are two methods that are used to, uh, how to say, yeah. Uh, score the similarity between two texts. Uh, mean hash is already used in many services in DOR, and it's yeah, it it performs good. It performs moderately good, but you know, still, it's not the best way. But it can give us a lot of information about the two texts being similar in their appearance. And we did this, and we get about two or three uh, percent improvement in the ROCA you see. It was a little, but well, it was better than anything. So uh, the other problem was that we were feeding embeddings to the dense layer, but model can't compare this to ads. You know, we have uh, embeddings of each uh, post one and we have embeddings of post two, but our model cannot, you know, exactly compare them. We could use multi uh, multi layer. Uh, multi-layer, multi-dense layer, or we could simply add a diff of this embedding. So uh, here we added the difference or subtractive embeddings here, and it was pretty awesome. You know, we got like 8% uh, improvement in ROC AUC, and for us it was a really good lesson because uh, our structure is basically something like that. We have a BioLSTM encoder, and we do all of our tasks uh, using that. But the problem was that we never thought about using difference of embeddings because uh, in our previous tasks, we hadn't that this kind of uh, challenges. Again, this simple feature helped us improve it, improve our metric uh, significantly. And again, it was our V3, which was 92, 95. And so uh, we think about uh, what's the next step, and we wanted to handle images. Uh, the first thing that we wanted to use was p hash for images. p hash or perceptual hash is a uh, way to encode a two not encode two hash images, and features in the image are used to generate fingerprints. It's a really simple method to generate uh, hash for this images, but they are comparable and they are moderately, you know, again, uh, good in production. They have, uh, the issue with them is that they have a lot of false positive, but uh, if they are not in charge of do, uh, taking actions, if a model using phash is not uh, in charge of taking actions, uh, but helping reviewers, you know, our operation to do something, they are pretty awesome, they help us find similar ads, we have an LSX service uh, which is you know, maintained easily using uh, these images and we get a lot of, how to say, uh, help from this uh, method. So we wanted to use it in our model. Uh, we added three features to our comparison stats. First, does add one has image or not? Does add two has image or not? And the size of common image uh, hashes that they have. For example, we calculate image hashes and we compare how many of them are similar, and that's, that's it simply. 
and we get about 2% improvement on that. And one, fact, uh, one thing that, should, that I should say is uh, I use these uh, pHash images from a you know, database. We have a dump of images, a, a dump of hash images, and it's not, uh, it has not come with complete coverage. It has like 60% coverage. So in the training, we had only hashes for 60% of images, and using only 60% of images, we, did, we get this improvement. And in the, we are hoping in the production, it will go much more up. So uh, here it was our V4, we, did, uh, we add images, and we wanted uh, to do some other things, right? So uh, there was nothing we can do, we can do about our uh, deep learning methods. We tried transformers, but actually uh, it didn't fit in our GPU memory. So yeah, <laughs> we forgot about that. Uh, later then, we got some new GPUs, but uh, we couldn't do that or, uh, at the moment. So we, get, we went to get some more features. So. The, uh, it's the extract era. We try to extract any kind of features from our post. We were looking at samples and you know, trying to find out how an, a human can uh, detect that are these two ads similar or not. So based on that, we wanted to extract features more and more. It's the list of features that we are extracting. And uh, we can see Levin Einstein scores, mean hash scores for titles, for description, for the whole text, again, the common numbers, the uh, number of common numbers, the number uh, if the post has image, the number of common image hashes, this, uh, are they same price, are they, uh, what's the price difference between them, uh, do they have to price, the length of, uh, what's the, the length of text, and also uh, one thing that we did was to, uh, we split the words in our text and we had a bag of words actually, and we get the length of intersection of, for example, titles. How many, ti how many words in titles are common? How many words uh, are uh, overall in both uni union of titles or descriptions or the whole text? Again, uh, difference of post one, uh, add one from uh, add two, you know? So, words of add one, subtract words of add two, and something like that. And we did uh, add all these uh, features, and the final result was ROCAC of 9591. And it was, uh, it was a really good metric for us. It was uh, a little bit even higher than our production standards. And the point was that we did all of this in like two days. So it was the end of OKR, and we had to get the metrics, you know, get the how the key objectives uh, done, and yeah, it really saved us. It is the tensor board of uh, the experiments we did. Here is the first one, and again, uh, the first one was on text only. We uh, what was that? I don't remember it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, comparison features. So, we added comparison features a little bit. Uh, better, the best difference that we got was after adding post divs, and after that, we added images and a little more uh, the other metric uh, features that we add. And this is the final retrain that we did for our production. Uh, so. Uh, after that, we want uh, we thought uh, we think uh, we thought excuse me about the what's next and what we are going to do. First of all, uh, we did some experiments about images. Really simple. We extracted uh, some features using MobileNet V3 Small, and we indexed all these features for about two million p images in a dense vector database search called Milvus, and. We got pretty awesome results, you know. Uh, we, for example, the query was uh, a picture of this room, and other pictures of this room were returned in uh, like among two million, two million uh, images, and they, you know, this, uh, this shows us that 
using uh, any print, pre-trained model, even mobile net can help us a lot. So we want to use deep learning methods to generate uh, image, hash, uh, image features instead of phash. Also, as we said, we have a lot of features here that, yeah, we have a lot of features here. Uh, they vary based on the, uh, the categories, so we don't have any structure for them, but there are methods that we can use them to generate our embedding. And this is the two things that we want to work on them later, and that's my time. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for the talk. Uh, uh, it was like really, inter really interesting topic. Uh, I have two questions. I mean, one one is more not, not more not of a question, but uh, some idea. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Now it, you can hear. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I think for the phash, maybe you have some kind of compression mechanism on your website that is when you're uploading when user is uploading the image, it is getting compressed, and yeah. then maybe some uh, some color shifts are happening. And then the phash is uh, misbehaving. Mm, is it the case, maybe? I'm not sure, actually. No, it's a really good uh, Especially thing to think if someone about. is But I'm not sure that we, uh, I'm not sure if we do a uh, comparison on, you know, we, uh, during the submit of ads, I'm not sure that do we do any comparison or not, but it's a really good thing to know. Uh, we haven't checked that yeah. yet. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one is, uh, yeah, of course, one can go with neural networks and trying to like identify the objects and uh, segment them, etc. But uh, maybe a simple color analysis can help because the example, for example, that you sh have shown were some uh, CPUs, I would guess, uh, and they were like they were shot from two different uh, directions, huh? aspects. Um, and I guess like, uh, yeah, like this one. Like for example, it's obvious that they, both of them are matching in one thing, which is amount of green. Huh? Yeah. So if you go to the uh, this uh, four-dimensional uh, vector, which will be the RGB plus the alpha channel. Okay, here there will not be alpha channel. But anyway, um, maybe I guess that could give a good feature. Uh, that's, again, that's really <laughs> <laughs> yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah, we should talk about this later. But uh, the problem, I know, not the problem. The thing is that uh, right now we haven't worked that much on any images, and we have some infrastructure problems with actually using images. Because uh, right now, if I want, you know, uh, that two million images that I said, talked about, actually I waited, I crawled our our own website for two days so I can get two million images. We have some kind of uh, this. We have this kind of in the infra infrastructure problems. But as you know, we are how to say uh, solving these problems. We are moving forward to use any kind of image methods. But right now, really, I don't have any information on that because. But I really appreciate your you know, question or tip. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your talk. Uh, uh, I've got some uh, questions. Couple of fun. Uh, I'll just like trying to quickly ask. Uh, the first one is about the uh, selecting positive and negative pairs. Uh, how you are selecting them? Uh, so yeah, that's a pretty good question because uh, it's not the. And I I was uh, hoping to put it in slides, but I didn't. Uh, actually, so we as as I said, we have operation and reviewers actually review some parts of ads, and when they review ads, uh, we show them. Uh, users other ads and they can select that for example this submitted ad is duplicated with another you know submitted ad in the past so here we have some uh, labels that these two posts are similar and for negatives uh, we could simply uh, how to say uh, select another post from that person that is not duplicated with that also it's a problem we have because when someone is uh, trying to somehow, somehow post duplicated ads, 
we only capture one of them, you know? So we say this post is similar with this one and not, uh, we don't check it with all the other posts from that user. But for our negative uh, class generating, we use this one with another, for example, post from that user that is not duplicated with it. But we have seen a lot of samples that it's, they are actually uh, duplicate, yeah? But we have no way to uh, find them right now. Thanks for answer. Uh, and what about the test sets and the size? Uh, test set and the size? And are you like updating the, all the procedure during the time because you, get, you are getting a new advertisement? I get it. Uh, are you updating it uh, in a while when you are getting a new ad? ad? Oh, yeah. And what about the size of the test uh, comparing to the... Uh, uh, the size of the, uh, t our training uh, uh, data set was about 1 million rows and our test sizes were about 200 or 300 and that's the size that usually works good for us. And right now, no, it's not training uh, with new ads, uh, ads, but we are working on a pipeline to retrain our models you know, using Airflow and things like that. But right now, no, that's the issue that we have and yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned you're doing pairwise comparisons, right? Yeah. Are you doing this across all 500k ads? Uh, so it's, we don't have 500k ads. We have 500 rows of prediction. You know, we have add one and add two in each row. So we have one million add one, add two, and it's not like a global search. Each ad being compared with all ads. It's the, glo it, it's the global method that we are doing. It's another project. In this project, we only are comparing two uh, posts in each time. Yeah, but uh, you also mentioned the spam possibility of the global, I guess, variant. Yeah. So that... Oh, you're only talking about the yeah, local? Yeah, yeah. From but within one same user? Okay, yeah. okay. So do you have any plans to go into global? Uh, so uh, yeah, we have, uh, right now, we have two Elastic services, which use mean hash for text and p hash for images. And uh, they are, you know, <clears throat> doing pretty good right now. But they have, uh, the issue with them is uh, their false positive, you know, ratio. And it's really, you know, somehow, I'm sad about it, you know, <laughs> yeah. Okay, but right now it's in use, it's our, old service uh, and uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more question about the p hash. So uh, the p hash as you described uh, basically describes the objects in the image. Not right? exactly. You know p hash is like that. Uh, it, do, uh, it does some kind of normalization on image. Uh, uh, I'm not sure about that, but it, uh, <coughs> how to say, it makes the algorithm tolerant for um, uh, uh, color shifting and uh, things like that. So it's kind of the kind of some kind of normalizations and then it's converted to a grayscale image. And then the average, uh, how to say, average value of pixels is calculated and each, pi and each pixel is uh, compared to that average. So it's, if it's more, we have, a one, we have one and if it's less, we have zero. So we have, uh, a sequence of one and zeros, and we can change that, you know, to any uh, ASCII okay. code, and that's the hash function we have. And the, you know, uh, somehow it can, yeah, it can tolerate some kind of the distortion or distractions on images. And yeah. right, that makes sense. Actually, I guess my question uh, stemmed also from like the global. If you were to do that, because then. Uh, the question will be if two separate people are selling the same car, for example, similar car, yeah. then obviously the images will be similar, even, uh, even so if they're taken in different yeah. places. So uh, the, the point with that is that we don't use p-hash to find similar images. We use it to find exactly similar or uh, images that have been a little bit edited or distract, uh, not distracted, or for example, the light, uh, the color has shifted. But where the source was the same. Yeah, yeah, Got yeah. Got it, okay, makes sense. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I guess I'm not very familiar with PF, that's why. Actually, as you said that, there is something interesting about this, uh, this task exactly. 
So, uh, as we said, the definition is, you know, uh, two ads referring to the same real world entity or service. That's not true, because uh, we have real estate category, and in real estate category, there is a real estate which is posted by many uh, <coughs> agencies, and they are all referring to the, the same entity. But we are okay that, uh, with that because we have no other choice. And no, the problem is a little bit really uh, still not uh, known for ourselves. We are somehow, uh, there are a lot of uh, regulators from the government. And you know, the problem is, <laughs> how, how to say, Evo yeah, it's evolving at the moment. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your attention and time. <laughs>